I'm just like any other Texan that, you know, I heard about identity theft happening all over the world, but at the same time, that one thing I always kind of like said to myself, it will never happen to me. I'm just that one individual out of billions of people that won't happen, but now that I became a victim, I can say that it can happen to anyone, just anybody of any age, regardless of how good your credit status is or not. He had on the Zells and um, Gordon's account, both of them had a total of $4,000 credit limit, and he charged on Zells, he charged $3,900. On the Gordon's, he charged 37 and with the Sam's, which had a $1,200 credit limit, he charged the whole amount of $1,200, which come where somewhere around a total of like over $8,000. It was like approximately two days after I purchased a new vehicle from uh, one of the dealerships here in town. And I got a call from a Ellison from out of uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. She was representing uh, the state of Texas in the fraud department for Cage Jewelers. And she was calling, inquiring about some information about, personal information about myself, such as my date of birth, my plural name, uh, where I work at, and you know, questions of that nature. And I I noticed how she was asking me a couple of questions and then she would pause and the phone went silence for like maybe like 25, 30 seconds and then she will come back on the phone. She explained to me that the reason why she was asking me questions of those nature is for the fact that she wanted to verify some information on my credit reporting due to the fact that there was a gentleman in the store posing as myself and he fell out an application but when they didn't have enough information on the application to uh, process it for a credit account to be open, they had to inquire about more information. And that's when they found that something wasn't, wasn't right with him not knowing information about himself, you know, to the point where that's when they contacted me and told me that uh, that person was using my information to obtain a, a account in, Jura, in Case Jewelers. And this is all happening in Austin, Texas. That's when the person started getting skeptical about and wondering, you know, if if something wasn't right. And that's when they uh, told me that he had left the store and that they so-called was trying to uh, trying to find get some security guard in, uh, in the mall to locate him. But apparently by the time they was talking to me and talking to the clerk on the phone, uh, that's when he just fled the store with his ID. I went to the police department on last weekend. I talked with the detective who um, who. I was able to uh, get more information to from and at the same time I did obtain a copy of everything regarding my case and I found that she she previously told me that there was other people that had similar instances happen to them but I didn't realize until I actually got a copy of my police report and saw that on the date where I filed my charges for identity theft that there was other people that was like four of the victims which was three before me and one after me. The first steps after it happens and you file a fraud alert, yes, you're gonna be going through the through a lot of extremely a lot of paperwork, the trail of trying to prove that it wasn't you, but once you eventually prove who it is, uh prove that it wasn't you, then you need to just keep an eye on your credit from that point on because I'm to the point now where I'm very weary, I'm very skeptical about leaving any personal information about myself due to the fact after what happened.